welcome all in this video so we are going to discuss about the tenia solium life cycle particularly we have to focus on the life cycle of the tenia solium so tenia solium which is commonly called as a tapeworm and this tapeworm is a common parasite of the human being and we have to discuss about the life cycle of this tenia solium so please if you like this video then share with your friends and subscribe the channel so let us see about the life cycle of the tenia solium so tenia solium or the tape form is a diagenetic organism this is a diagenetic organism diagenetic means these organisms require two hosts to complete their life cycle so this can require two hosts to complete their life cycle so this organism is called as a diagenetic and in that one of the host is a human being and another host is the pig so the fertilization of this organism of this tenia solium takes place in the human being fertilization before the fertilization there is a uh, cross fertilization or type of fertilization takes place there is a copulation takes place cross fertilization between the same or the other proteids takes place in the human body in the adult of this organism so we know, we know that this organism is made by particular type of such a type of structure that structures are called as proteids made by many proteids and when this proteids becomes mature then the cross fertilization process is the takes place this is can be takes place in the single tapeworm the cross fertilization can be possible in the single fert, single tapeworm by the cross fertilization that is the that process is called as copulation that is the insertion of the serous into the vagina of the same or the other proteids uh, can be takes place to release the spermatozoa when, spermatozoa when this uh, process is takes place that can be called as cross fertilization and this is the internal fertilization type of fertilization which takes place into the body when this uh, common gonopores of this proteids two mature proteids comes in contact then there is a folding occurs that is the anterior mature proteids having only male genital copulator organs anterior proteids having male genital copulator organs while the posterior mature proteids having fully developed female genital organs so the combination of the male and female genital organs takes place here that is here uh, that is mature proteids comes in contacts due to the folding of this proteids due to the folding of this proteids the cross fertilization process can be takes place so we know that anterior mature proteids having male genital copulator organs and posterior genital posterior proteids having fully developed female genital organs and this type of in this case of uh, tenia solium there is having the internal fertilization fertilization takes place into the body of the that parasite particular parasites after the injection of the uh, injection of the spermatozoa then that spermatozoa injected into the vagina then then swim down and settle into the seminal receptacle part the seminal receptacle where there this spermatozoas are then stored and ova and sperms are finally meet and that process is called as fertilization after the fertilization this fertilization takes place in a particular part that is called as fertilization duct fertilization takes place in the fertilization duct afterward after the fertilization zygote is formed and that zygote or also called as egg cell around that egg cell here is the zygote around the zygote there is a particular cell is formed and that process is called as capsule formation that is zygote is enclosed in a shell and this cell is made due to uh, this yolk material by the using of this yolk material around the egg around the zygote or the egg this particular shell is formed which is also called as chorionic membrane this chorionic membrane takes place or formed around the zygote and that process is called as capsule formation and the further development of this animal can be takes place into the uterus so first of all the this particular type of capsule formation takes place 
and afterward then that particular capsules then developed into the uterus so we know that the sperms and ova meet that process is called a fertilization and that fertilization takes place in the particular duct that duct is called a fertilization duct and here the zygote formation takes place and afterward the development is takes place into the uterus around the zygote some covering envelope is formed that envelope is called as a shell which is called as egg shell which is also called as coronic membrane this can be takes place due to the, uh, the there is having the role of the yolk for the formation of this egg shell then the next step oncosphere formation takes place. next step is the oncosphere formation oncosphere formation around that egg we know that the shell formation takes place afterward the cleavage process can be takes place in that organism and this cleavage is the dividation of the uh, zygote into many cells that is called as cleavage this cleavage is holoblastic that is holoblastic and unequal type of cleavage is found in the tenia solia holoblastic means uh, from one zygote two complete cells are formed that process is called a holoblastic and here is the unequal type of unequal type of cleavage that is one larger cell is formed and another smaller cell is formed larger cell is called as megamere cell and smaller cell is called as embryonic cell so from a zygote single cell cell zygote two cells are formed in that first cell is a larger second cell is a smaller larger cell is called as megamere smaller cell cell is called as embryonic cell further development is also found that is from that larger megamers from that larger megamers which further divide larger megamers further divide and forming many smaller megamers larger megamers then divide and forming smaller megamers smaller megamers while from the embryonic cell by the dividation of the embryonic cell again two types of cell formed that is one is called as mesomere which is relatively larger in size and smaller micromeres are formed so here from the megamers smaller megamers are formed and from the embryonic cell larger cells are formed that is called as mesomeres and again smaller cells are formed that is called as micromeres and from that micromeres this micromeres again divide into many cells and forming a mass of cell that is called as a morula micromeres forms a rounded mass of cell that is called as a morula and this morula is surrounded by a particular envelope morula then surrounded by inner envelope of mesomeres and outer envelope of megamers morula then enveloped by covered by mesomeres and inner mesomere and outer layer of megamers then this outer embryonic membrane which can use food to nourish the embryonic cell outer embryonic membrane nourishes the embryonic cell so large yolky megamers fuse to form outer nutritive layer large yolky megamers fuse to form outer nutritive layer that is called as outer embryonic membrane and that outer embryonic membrane is useful to nourish the embryonic cells for the nourishment of embryonic cells there is having the outer embryonic membrane while mesomeres is thick hard and striated cell mesomeres is a thick hard and striated cell membrane then this morula then forms a thick hard shell which is called as embryo pore so mesomeres forms embryo pore embryo pore is a inner embryonic membrane embryo pore by the mesomeres embryo pore uh, layer is formed that is called as inner embryonic membrane and also there is having around that morula around that morula there is also having the basement membrane and then again this morula then develop into a next stage that is called a hexagon hexagon that is and oncosphere stages are found this hexagon means there is having again there are six hooks are formed 
in this morula and that is due to which there is having they get the name hexacan hexacan morula at its posterior end towards the posterior end of the morula three pairs of chitinous hooks are formed and this stage is called as hexacan hexacan means having six hooks this six hooks embryo is called a hexacan and this hexacan is surrounded by hexacan membranes hexacan are surrounded by the hexacan membranes hexacan with all membrane is called as oncosphere hexacan with all membranes are called as oncosphere here is having an oncosphere so hexacan with their membranes are called as oncospheres and their uh, layers are loses then this uh, layers are again loose oncospheres membranes are found around that hexacan and afterward this oncospheres are uh, the layers are then loses by the time of oncospheres formation at the time of oncospheres formation at the same time here there is the oncospheres formation takes place into the body then at the same time proglottids becomes gravid when this oncospheres formation takes place into the body at the same at the same time the proglottids becomes gravid and in that gravid proglottids there is having we can found 30000 to 40000 oncospheres in this proglottids so at the same time where there the oncospheres formation takes place then at the same time these proglottids becomes gravid so this process takes place simultaneously afterward afterward this proglottids mature gravid proglottids are then cut off and the process of detach of this proglottids is called as apolysis apolysis means um, the posterior most and by the, this process of apolysis the posterior most proglottids are cut off and in that proglottid there is having oncospheres and by this oncospheres the secondary host get the infection after apolysis the gravid proglottids pass out with the host stool or the host waste material and then afterward this oncospheres enters into the body of the secondary host because at the posterior end Uh, the proglottids are detached gravid proglottids are detached and pass out the host waste material such a way thousands of oncospheres set free and then this reach to the secondary or inter intermediate host then they enter into the secondary host or also intermediate host this host gets infection this host gets infection by injecting the oncospheres this oncospheres reach into the pig that pigs which feeds on human excreta may be have the chances to become the secondary host but also we can found this can also enter into the dogs monkey sheep this can also oncospheres also enter, enter and into the body of the dogs monkey and sheep they can migration then the oncospheres migrate into the body of the secondary host the first of all goes to the stomach of the secondary host in the stomach of this host oncospheres em loses embryo pore and basement membrane this embryo pore membrane and basement membranes are loses when this oncospheres into the stomach of the secondary host like the pig then this free hexacanth the due to the action of the acidic juice these layers are dissolved and hexacan then pre up and this hexacan pre hexacan passes into the small intestine and again they lose some membranes and it finally reaches the blood or lymph vessels so first of all this oncospheres enter the stomach of the pig then enter into the small intestine then travel towards the blood or lymph vessel hexacan then goes to the intestinal epithelium to reach to the blood or lymph vessels again after 10 minutes it loses hooks so this hexacan having the hooks that hooks are now loses afterward after 10 minutes it loses hooks hooks 
which are useful to anchor the intestinal walls and these hooks are not having further work so these hooks are then loses or detach while secretion of pancreatic uh, pen penetration glands dissolves Sec due to the secretion of the penet penetration glands dissolves these hooks the intestinal tissues it takes 10 minutes and blood vessels carries this hexacant blood vessel carries this hexacant to liver blood vessel carries this hexacant to the liver and finally from the liver then this goes to the heart and finally settle in the tongue shoulder thigh heart like all anterior muscles or finally they can settle into the or lodge into the tongue shoulder thigh heart like muscles and here they develop into a particular type of structure that is called as bladder worm then this hexa can develop into cysty circus cysty circus or bladder worm so here is having a bladder worm this worm uh, this particular structure is called as bladder worm because there is having a bladder this bladder is full of particular type of fluid filled vessel so called as bladder and this bladder is filled with the blood plasma due to which it gets the name bladder worm so hooks are hooks of is the hexacans are loses and they can absorb now nourishments from the host tissue grows in size and get a diameter of 18 mm and fills with the blood plasma and now called as bladder worm towards the anterior side of this bladder worm we can found the anterior side of the bladder worm is then goes down anterior side is and that uh, that is called as invagination invaginates the anterior side is invaginates and forms inverted again in the next stage this uh, anterior invaginated structure forming proscolex invaginate structure then forming a proscolex and here we can found that this is scolex having proscolex having hooks suckers rostrum like a, like the structures are formed in that post collex so invagination forms inverted collex and which is having suckers hooks and rostrum which is having the structure of post collex and the cysty circus develops into adult when they enter into the human host when they that is it is called as post collex and it takes 10 weeks in the pig now afterward when this cysty circus enter into the human body and then the further development takes place in the human body and here evagination process takes place after the entry into the human body and uh, whenever uh, the pork that is a mesley pork that is particular pork which is having the cysty circus that pork is called as mesley pork when this mesley pork uh, which is that is a pork means a pig's flesh when with the help of this pig's flesh when eaten by any person that can called as mesley pork when that contains cysty serous this cysty serous then enter into the body of the human beings so the cysty serous develop into adult only when ingested by the human host that is and this cysty serous can remain viable for several years in that particular pig's body and that particular pork is called as mesley pork that is pig's flesh containing viable cyst and then again get the infection primary host again primary host get the infection due to undercooked mesley pork due to undercooked mesley pork man get infection of this pork and then proscolex evaginate proscolex emerges out of the body after 10 to 12 weeks that can attains adulthood this bladder then Uh, dissolve and forming a flat structure of this organism is also called as flat worm due to their structure the such structures are formed the structures are made by many proteids they are having immature mature and gravid proteids so here is the development takes place so overall structure overall development of the life cycle takes place afterward formation of zygote then stage is zygote then divide uh, around the zygote a cell is formed that is called as egg cell capsule formation takes place then cleavage process takes place two cells are formed a smaller cell larger cells from the two cells again three type of cells are formed then 
morula stage is found in this organism then embryo pore are formed then hexacanth or oncospheres are formed hexacanths are formed then this hexacanth free into the blood of uh, the pigs and then invagination takes place proscolex formation takes place evagination process takes place and afterward adult is formed so from this stage up to that is a young oncosphere formation up to the bladder worm formation this process is on uh, this stages are found in the pigs and other stages are found in the human being so this is all about the life cycle of the tenia solium